five minutes. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you and Chairman Chavitz for calling this uh, hearing uh, an annual hearing that I think is one of the most important hearings that we hold uh, each year. Mr. Dodaro, I, uh, I think the, the work that uh, your agency does is extremely important and, and valuable for us. Uh, uh, I have uh, several different questions. I won't have time to get into all of them, but um, we have background information from the staff that says that the Department of Defense now has weapons, weapons uh, uh, acquisition uh, programs that total $1.3 trillion, spending over $100 billion an annually on uh, weapon system acquisition. Uh, I know you have put out uh, several recommendations over the years, and especially in 2011, a report saying it was very inefficient to uh, uh, their weapons acquisition program and there, there were duplications and so forth. Do you think that uh, the Department of Defense has done enough uh, uh, in regard to your recommendations that you have made on that in the past, or could there be additional savings uh, in that area? Uh, I, I think they can uh, definitely do more. We have appreciated what they have done. They have adopted some of the best practices, recommendations that we have suggested. They have begun looking at things, but I am concerned that some of the reforms have not been implemented very consistently over time. I will ask Mr. Francis, who is our expert in this area, to give you a more uh, thorough right. answer. But uh, there is more that could be done. All right. Uh, morning, Mr. Duncan. Uh, yes, I think one of the things that we have talked about uh, is uh, portfolio management, which is uh, basically an approach for the Department to look at its weapon system portfolio as a whole. Uh, because one of the looming problems for defense is uh, when you get beyond the next five-year plan, there is much more demand for money for weapon systems than there is money available. And so the Department has to take a more a holistic look across weapon systems to see what the best mix of investments are for them. And right now the Department has uh, multiple processes that are fragmented for budgeting, requirements, and acquisitions, and the services all do their own thing. So we pretty much have a process that optimizes for individual weapon systems, but we need to look more across the board. All right. Well, thank you very much. Week before last, I was on a trip with uh, three senators and another member of the House, and we met with uh, uh, Admiral Harris, who is the uh, head of the Pacific Command, and and we were talking we were talking about the problems the Defense Department is facing in uh, acquiring some of the more expensive uh, weapons and th things that they need. And we talked about how that the costs that have been shooting way up have been in the uh, in the pay and benefits and the and and so forth, and many top leaders have talked about that problem, how it's cutting into being able to buy the equipment that they want. And Admiral Harris said that uh, he thought that they needed to, we needed to have another BRAC. Mr. Tillotson, do you have any opinion on that? And uh, and also, Mr. Dodaro, what uh, if you all looked into that? Surely. Uh, it is the Department's position that a, another round of BRAC would be appropriate. Uh, Mr. Dodaro's findings about the use of lease space and underutilization of government space relates to making better use of the space that we have, and we certainly agree we should do that. But having said that, um, there is a large amount of space that is um, more industrial uh, and involves a lot of bases that are at this point largely underutilized, and we do believe there is excess capacity that could be reviewed, so we would endorse uh, another round of BRAC. There is definitely excess uh, property, and uh, our work, though, focused on reviewing past BRAC rounds have shown that the Department needs to make additional improvements in its methodology for estimating BRAC and, you know, savings and actually bringing those savings to realization. The initial estimates are far in excess of what DOD eventually achieves through the BRAC rounds due to continual changes in requirements and other things. So our, our opinion, if Congress decides to grant them their request for another round of recommendation, another round of uh, BRAC, they really need to implement our recommendations so that Congress has assurance that there really, at the end of the day, will be the savings that should be achieved through any process in this All nature. Right. We have many outstanding recommendations that the Department has not yet implemented in this regard. Another area before my time runs out, uh, you mentioned potentially saving billions on uh, Social Security disability payments. Will you tell us about the 
what needs to be done in that area? Yes. Uh, right now, uh, people can receive full disability benefits and unemployment benefits at the same time. Now, there's some ability, if somebody's on disability, they can grant, get permission to try to work, because obviously we want them to get back to work. But if they take a, a job and then they're eventually laid off from that position, they can collect both benefits. And we don't think that this is a prudent use of the federal government's money to get both full disability benefits and unemployment benefits at the same time. Uh, CBO's estimated, I believe, we could, they could save about $1.3 billion over a few-year period if this change is made. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.